This is Occupy Main TV on Portland's Community Television Network. Hi, I'm Bob Klotz reporting on our environment. There are many that continue to deny the negative and destructive impacts on our environment, despite the strong evidence to the contrary. On all levels, from the individual to the global, our environment reveals dis-ease. For instance, though it might seem like a good thing, 53 degrees and a lack of snow in Maine in January is not normal. Mounds of snow and frigid temperatures in the winter are actually signs of a wellness when it comes to our environment. Clearly, the nuances of health, disease, and our incredible planet are far more complex than simple black and white statements of facts or anecdotes. There really is science. Denial is a common dyna dynamic in the context of illness. However, there comes a time when movement beyond denial is necessary. Such movement often requires the assistance of skilled practitioners sensitive to the realities of a disease, and denial. Bill McKibben is such an individual. As well informed and informing as any clinician, Bill approaches the disease state of our environment with a mix of facts, motivation, and humor. A true healer on a planetary level, Bill's impact is, and his many accomplishments and acknowledgments are impressive. For decades, Bill has continued to be an environmental leader and has been writing and talking and organizing and warning and challenging and motivating all of us. Through his work with 350.org, Bill has had numerous successes, most notably with his protests against the Keystone XL tar sands pipeline of recent. The details are available through numerous resources, but suffice it to say that Bill, 350.org, and other like-minded individuals have caught the attention of many in their pursuit of health for our planet. Bill continues his efforts in reminding all of us to attend to the complex responsibilities required to protect Mother Earth and our own health. And Bill supports the Occupy movement, seeing the undeniable link between the power of the 1% and the destruction of our planet. Bill recently spoke at the Westbrook Middle School as part of the University of New England's Center for Global Humanities Seminars. His talk, Report from the Front Lines of Climate Change, took place on January the 20th. As he comments, earlier in the day, he participated in the Occupy the Courts event in Portland and observed the encampment. Fortunately, we had the opportunity to meet with Bill prior to his presentation. So Bill, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're very busy. Good to be with you. Congratulations on your uh, success with the uh, Keystone XL tar sands pipeline. Well, you know, we only win at best temporary victories in this business. That's all environmentalists ever get. But it is good to see um, at least people beginning to stand up to the oil industry a bit. And what do you see as the next step? We can't stop global warming one pipeline at a time. Um, we're going to have to really challenge the basic financial and political power of the fossil fuel industry. That's what's keeping us from making effective change. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be up on Capitol Hill, you know, even in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have de big demonstrations trying to uh, trying to call attention to the fact that these guys have rigged this game. Uh, and you have an event on January the 24th. 24th, we'll be 500 people in referee shirts out there blowing the whistle on Congress on the fact that they take money from companies and then vote on their interests, which is just plain wrong. Pretty much every state in the union almost has a politician who's on the take and needs to be called out on it. I think that this pipeline will, and many others, will come back in some right. form or another unless we, um, unless we really change the structure of our energy system. And to do that, we have to break the power of the fossil fuel industry. Huge, huge challenge. They're obviously not going to just roll over and say, oh. They you. have. Um, I'm no theologian, but they have more money than God, you know, and, uh, and uh, they are willing to use it. What would you say relative to this, uh, the nonviolent protests and so forth, that you've learned, having been arrested in D.C. and, and having the big event uh, in D.C. Uh, in the past, uh, what have you learned about The only thing that, you know, the, we, if we're going to take on the wealth of the most profitable industry on earth, we're going to have to find other currencies to work in. We're never going to have as much money. 
So there's other currencies or passion and spirit and creativity, and sometimes there are bodies, you yeah. know, and that's what we've we got to use what we got. Realizing that this is a severe oversimplification, is there one action that you recommend that all of us could take uh, to speak to these challenges? Well, <laughs> organize, 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 you know. Um, um, we need to, um, there's nothing we can do in our own homes or lives that will really reverse climate change. It's going to have to be systemic and political. Right. And um, it, I'm going to have to, I mean, we're going to have to take on the power of the fossil fuel industry and the fact that they're allowed to pour their waste into the atmosphere for free. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fair and it needs to end. One of the things that I advocate is uh, referring to it as our environment versus the environment because uh, it just seems to reinforce this disconnect. Yeah, of, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. And, and, I mean, the work your organization, 350.org, is trying to make sort of those fundamental connections that, that, that offset that disconnect. Could you speak a little bit about 350.org? Sure, 350.org um, you know, draws its odd name from what scientists tell us is the most carbon we can safely have in the atmosphere, 350 parts per million, a figure we're already well past, unfortunately. Um, and where do we think we are now? We're 392 parts per million and rising. Um, we've organized in every country on Earth but North Korea. We've got the first big global grassroots climate change campaign. A little tough it's, getting into North Korea. Yeah, a little North Korea's a little <laughs> tough. It's, um, it's very beautiful to see people all over the world coming together. And it's very, very difficult because the challenges are the same every place. The power of that money to um, drag you down. It must be frustrating when confronting the climate deniers and the machine uh, for those of us who can feel defeated around it at times, the words of advice and again, organize, organize. I heard. But. Well, uh, the only thing—I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I wrote the first book about climate change 23 years ago. Mm. Um, you got to, um, you know, the only antidote to despair is uh, deep engagement. You know, if you're mm. fighting, uh, you're doing what you can. And you were. Uh, selected by Utney Magazine in 2010 as one of the 25 visionaries who's, who are changing the world. Um, do you find yourself challenged as a leader in this regard? I spent half my, you know, half my life the last few years in airplanes. Um, I'm spewing a lot of carbon up. When I'm at home, I'm pretty carbon neutral, but not in my life as an organizer. And I guess I have to hope that um, we accomplish at least enough good to offset the damage I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Just curious what your take is on the Occupy movement and how it relates or doesn't no, relate. I, it's been one of the great happinesses of the last while. I think I was spoke at nine different Occupy encampments in the course of the last few months. Oh, um, wonderful. I got down to Zuccotti Park right at the beginning and got to speak through the big human microphone. And one of the things that I just said to people was, Thank you. It's about time. Wall Street's been occupying the atmosphere for the last quarter century. It's time we return the favor. Yeah, yeah. So it was really good to drive by the Occupy Portland encampment there and see everybody still hard at work even in the middle of the winter. Excellent yeah, stuff. Well, yeah. it was fun to be on the steps of the courthouse today and just talking with people about exactly that. That's what we need. It was a true pleasure to meet with and hear Bill, and you can too by going to the link of his full speech at the University of New England. The next phase of 350.org's Blow the Whistle event is coming up. Be sure to contact 350.org to express your interest and contact me as we coordinate activities.